really great idea. Um, this is the my friend's son I was telling you about. This is right on his high chair tray. Um, just a, a topic board for meals. Um, it has a lot of words like, um, all done, wait a minute, more. Hurry up, mom, you're taking too long. Thirsty, <laughs> hungry, I like it. Um, here's our here's our role model Lydia with her friend Libby. And they got this communication board at school on the playground. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So all people can use it to communicate, not just not just Lydia and Libby. Um, we're doing we're doing a C while we're doing art at my school, which is really fun. Um, we're having core boards in our living rooms and our bathrooms. And on the boat dock, <laughs> this Lydia um, has her spelling page because her mama is so amazing and knows that <coughs> Lydia has things to say all the time. And sometimes it's in the water. And so hooking this onto the dock, I just thought was the most brilliant thing. So always within arm's reach is my rule of thumb in the classroom when I'm um, like supporting educators. Um, so you can wallpaper your house with these core boards. Um, so there's always available. Um, how do you craft that, right? Like, how do you know which of the, like, because we're, um, our daughter's had her AAC for probably about, about a year, right? And I think the, the hardest part is the implementation process of, like, is it working? Is it as effective as it can be for her? modeling, that is brilliant, but then how do you kind of consolidate that into what you think she'll need or how you start to create those little snapshots of what she's working with the most? Do that? Um, I think it's it's been a very, very slow progression for us, so it was definitely not a thing. This. This was probably more recent in the last, the doc was this summer. Um, but prior to that, it was not, it, it's been, she's had it since kindergarten, and she's starting sixth grade. So it's been a very gradual, slow process, both for language development through LAMP, we use LAMP words for life as well. And um, so it was really just like following her lead. I always say it's LAMP, so I always say Lydia lights our way. Like she just, lights the way of the path for us and we just follow. So it's less me directing and more her directing me in a way. Um, so, but yes, I, I kind of got to, we had kind of trouble her feeling um, motivated to use it at school because kids in her class, two other children had it, but they weren't utilizing it, I would say. And then obviously when you're in the general education classroom, she really didn't want to use it there because no one else did. And that's just not the cool thing. We're starting to be aware of others and all that. So um, again, all of that thrown into the mix, just your regular child development as you progress, let alone language development as you progress, and then mix that all together, holy moly. So I got to a point where I'm like, we're just throwing this anywhere and everywhere just to be like, oh, this is cool. Oh, I see it there. We put it in the classrooms. Every classroom had a poster. Every kid had a core board on their desk. Like. So I, you can never do too much. Don't ever, I mean, don't stress yourself out. That's not the point. I'm just saying you can't really overdo it. The more exposure, even just, I always said, even if it's just represented there, even if the teacher doesn't use it in the classroom, I kind of don't care. I mean, I do, deep down, but <laughs> I really do care a lot, actually. But at least, like, baseline, let's get it up there. Let's show that that's a thing, and I recognize that, and just her seeing it on the wall is like, oh, that's there. Hey, that's what I have. Oh my gosh, general education peers have one on their desk, dude. I'm in. Mean, like, so just yeah. That again, that bridge too, as Megan has said, like that bridge of home, school, um, therapy, therapist. That whole bridge is really where you're kind of bending over backwards. You got you're really trying to fill that gap, but um, that's that's what what our role is, you know. Yeah. I don't know if that's quite good. Yeah, I love that. Just. Seeing it somewhere else helps helps them have a sense of belonging. Like, oh, hey, they have that here. I belong here. One quick thing too is we 
um, would take devices in. I have extra devices. We would use Megan's device, and the teacher would have a device. And the kids, general education peers, to have a, an iPad themselves and get to push buttons on it, whoa, okay. I mean, that's even like fourth graders. Fifth graders were totally in. Like, they were like, yeah, oh yeah, I'll show Lydia. I'll, Lydia, teach me, you know? So, like, incorporate those peers, incorporate your anyone that's around your child, use them. What state are you in? Where are you in? We're in Michigan, okay, yeah. And I will say, too, one of the things, I'm not sure, this is kind of similar to the question, but slightly different. Um, so we tried this with my daughter, Kate, and she's eight. Um, she can get really frustrated because she's pretty far advanced. I'd say like she's building sentences and things on her lens, um, on their lamp, or on her lamp device. So if she, you just give her this, she's gonna be incredibly frustrated um, because she knows like if she pushes, if she's trying to say like, dad, for example, she'll go to all, but when she touches this on this paper, it's not, it doesn't change screens. So she can't build up the vocab she wants. So one of the things, that I did at home is um, I got a digital copy of all the land words and I essentially used some laminated things and some Velcro and built out like if we're going out on a boat for example or going somewhere where her device may overheat. Um, I put all of the big words that she really loves so she could at least move it um, with Velcro to a different block um, to eliminate some of the frustration but still give her kind of the core words that she wants to say. Um, Cadence does also a couple, she's got some sign capability for her favorite words. So blending those things together we found to be the most effective in situations where we couldn't have a device, rather than just printing out these screens. Um, I'm not sure what other staff needs to do with our, but that's one of the tips we did at home that helped her a lot. Love that, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you guys can get really creative. I mean, you have to, right? Like, you're almost in survival mode of like, how can we do this at home? Um, so keep sharing those ideas with each other. such that 
isolating to those little tiny buttons is really hard for them. Excuse me. Um, and then we're going to find whatever system and match it to whatever they need. And we're going to have a lot of team meetings within all of this. Um, and we're going to come back to the table with data that's not plus and minus data. It's more observational data, which is a lot more powerful for some of our learners. Um, that's kind of the process that we use in the schools, that I use in the schools, that is really best practice. I have a question about that process. Um, is there ever conversations, whether this be at the school or speech therapist, obviously the cadence already has an AAC, we're, we're kind of past that, but one of the things that nobody explained to you is the difference between the software and the hardware. So we agreed to LAMP, right? That's where she, she grew from, big LAMP component. it. Um, the actual hardware um, made a huge difference. Um, we got like an accent device. Yes. <laughs> it was a terrible experience. Um, thing over the battery doesn't Very it's big and heavy. Small. They're massively heavy. They're also like ungodly expensive. Um, but where an iPad, I mean, you can get the same software on that. Um, so is there any step in this process where the parents or the actual professionals that will be helping with the AAC get a say in influencing the, the hardware choice, or is that solely like an insurance decision? Okay, so the question I think, let me paraphrase, is do parents or family members get a say in terms of what actual hardware or piece of technology itself your child end up, ends up getting? Um, yes. But there's also a but. I mean, I don't. I I don't know if I'm going to answer it the correctly per se. Um, I'm going to come at it from an educational standpoint for a second. So let me go back the slide. Um, if you are in my local educational agency or my school district or my school, you are a part of that IEP team, and so you definitely have a yeah. say. Um, and gosh, like the buy-in from the family is what I think is the most important because we really want we really want it to be used at home, right? From a medical facility, that's another way you can acquire a communication device and how you acquired that accent, yep. which is a dedicated device. Um, that you should definitely, as a family member, I would say. Is there like a resource list? I guess somewhere. For all, I just want to hope to avoid for all the parents in the room is I would like to arm them with the information that is there's a, you're going to try all the software that the hardware looks like um, does create a lot of different things for the your kiddo and the family yes. and where are there, is there a list of like available hardware resources that's provided to families so they can do their research yes something like that probably does <laughs> exist let me I'll probably have to, to find it because you could google it right but then you're there's so, so many. Um, yes. Let me first, maybe this is going to help a little bit. So, really quick, can I just add on that? Yes. So, Kennedy has an iPad that the school gave her, mm -hmm. and um, that's where Lamp was put on. Um, and I think the school will get whatever we need, but, like, is it, so to, to tag on to that. Sorry, oh, okay. Sorry. Kid, kids know what an iPad is and they feel comfortable with it, but is that a good or a bad thing? Because if they can also watch YouTube on it, are they going to also, you know what I mean? So, but I would say I want Kennedy to have an iPad with whatever. Like, if you don't have to get the iPad, yeah. Yeah, we I would have, rather have the iPad. We had the accent. The school was like, it, it needed to be repaired. Reason number 673 at the time to fix it <laughs> um, the school provided an iPad and Android. The buttons were so much larger. Yeah. Um, it to, to the point where, like, we're just using an iPad until the next insurance up is available, and mm -hmm. I'll request a different system. But I, what I don't know is, is there somewhere where I can research actual hardware um, other than iPad? No, I actually love an iPad. Right. <laughs> so I would like to have an iPad. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's something that's provided to families. Early on, in the there's a lot of conversations about software. I think it is obviously usually important, but the hardware does make a difference, and it's usually skipped over in the process. Is the hardware better though than the iPad? Is that what? No, the hardware. Yeah. Is so okay. okay. Well, so and I just I have researched my options to know if there is something that yeah. has all the same capabilities that's better. I have no idea, but I don't know where to find that information. And I assume most of the parents in this room don't 
know those things, but you know. So, so in our situation, hardcore options are there. Is it just iPad or an accent? And is that like kind of to your question? Well, I don't even know the answer to that question. Like, 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 how do we, I think, to your point, it's a good point. Like, how do you, like, as an organization, kind of pull those things together? It's like, here's your hardware option. Is an iPad, is it's an asset, to the recommendation would be the iPad. I have a question about the software, but I will hold my question. <laughs> <laughs> device so like before iPads existed this was what we had um, and they they are like tens of thousands of dollars and then the iPads came out and it just made things way more accessible for families and educators and but they have to have kids that. but they have to have an app which is the software you're talking about um, but so the dedicated devices are kind of what came first um, and they are supposed to be more durable they aren't Always, I I was demonstrating and dropped one to show a team that they don't worry, it's not going to break. Like, don't be afraid. And like, the screen broke. And it was it was a real low point in my career. Um, I won't tell you what company it was, but uh, anyway, um, that when so dedicated devices are also um, uh, I. My opinion is if your child has more medical needs and they need a different way to access their communication system, maybe through eye gaze or through switches, um, then a dedicated device, it, the hardware is better. Sure. Um, but if you have uh, a direct selector who's going to use their finger, then um, a, a, um, a non-dedicated or a tablet or an iPad is probably going to be fine. Um, that being said, there there is no, trust me, there are no cases out there that are bulletproof enough to provide screen, or to prevent screens from breaking. I think I've kind of answered this. The, there are um, like big AEC companies like um, PRC, Prank which makes the Accents, which is also the company that developed Lamp Works for Life. Like the guy that made the app, the that language system is from PRC. Uh, it's called Unity. Um, is there anything extra you get from going to what you're saying? Is there anything extra you get by having an arm or side? The extra you get is you get more support. Is what I find. Um, I know that is able to sponsor the conference. Yeah. Are they here? Do they have any representatives here? They, um, they do, uh, they have support, but it's only through AbleNet versus like, gosh, I have these technical questions and someone from PRC or Toby Box is really knowledgeable and they're going to be able to help me versus someone from AbleNet. And that is my opinion. I'm just going to share it with you. Uh, and I will say PRC on the repair services front, um, they do repair it. Um, Things that I did not know was going through is like warranty is not always. So like there will come a time when the warranty comes up and you'll have to work through either your insurance to get warranty on it to get it repaired or you'll pay out of pocket. Um, they do repair it um, and if they can't repair it, they will give you a new one. Um, so long as you're under your warranty window and they can fix some of the really technical pieces that you wouldn't get with an iPad support but it's fair. Um, I think AbleNet does have a really good replacement program too. Um, maybe we could link up some of those at the end of the slide deck for you guys, um, so you can have a place to go. I just wanted to say, so we got our device through PRC Soto, and it is just a Samsung tablet, but they like engineered it with a speaker, so it's a lot louder than her iPad because we have an iPad as well. But we made it, uh, so I think the speaker is the 
biggest difference that I see, so the curve voice can be louder. Um, and the case seems more um, drop proof than the iPad case, but that's kind of iPad equipped with a big speaker too, so Our it must be iPad. Okay. Ours is your Toby Dynavox, and it's they send you an iPad in an iPad box, and then it comes with a separate like speaker case. It sounds like that. Basically. And then we have the um, key guard mm -hmm. too. Okay. Um, we insurance? have no idea. How to use we it. got it through insurance, and it is locked, so it is dedicated. But we can pay twenty five dollars to unlock it if we choose to. We haven't at this point, but. It's the we did the same thing, so um, I hate to say this, but it sounds like you might need uh, a slightly different person to be more of an advocate because mm -hmm. we've gone through three different medical facilities, and each time we've gone to medical facilities, I have been communicated with from the beginning, do we need a go talk, do we need buttons, do we need this, do we need this, do we need enable the, the speech tech, do we need an iPad, and we got to decide through insurance. We I didn't even know we could do through school until last conference. Mm -hmm. yeah. School didn't even talk to us yeah. at all about communication so, because we had to go through schools, yeah. now we have schools. But our, the medical personnel, our team, our speech therapists, they are with us every step of the way, and they talk to us about what we might want. So we got an iPad paid for through insurance locked as our dedicated device. We didn't pay the $25, and somehow it is unlocked. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, and so we don't know how that happened. Joe does not navigate away. He's almost 10. He does not navigate away from land. We are currently in process for trialing pro -la quo Not pro -la quo to go, but pro -la quo um, We are going to add that ourselves. And until insurance and speech therapy decide to figure their whole situation out. And I feel like that is a wonderful tool for us because it is unlocked, because it's already his iPad speech device, because he's already used to it. We're having to transition because yeah, Lamp did not want to do for school. The motor planning, it's been two years and we get like 10 words. That's it. If you have an iPad and you don't know this, there's guided access. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to lock it, it's just a triple click, yeah. and it locks it in the app you are in. So my daughter uses TD Snap, so I lock it into TD Snap. We don't use her iPad for literally anything else, so there's nothing for her to go to, and she wouldn't know how to do it anyways. But to get out of guided access, you triple click again, and then you have to type in your iPad's password. So that works until your kid figures out the triple click and the password. <laughs> Oh. One more really random thing is Joe has a play device, which I'm sure everybody has, and he has his communication device, which is his iPad. We made the choice very early on. Joe gets blue cases for his play device and green cases for his speech device. So across the board, no one in our family is allowed to have a green case or a blue case. If they get a device, they have to choose a different color. But for us, it's worked out very really well because visually then he can reach and know the green one is for speech and not for play if it ever does get unlocked. And the blue one is for YouTube. But should it be separate? Is it bad if your kids have YouTube and also have the I think it's- We started using YouTube on this. And I think that I've, I used to be in this camp of like, definitely too, right? But, um, also, like what the what AAC users have been saying is, they like to be able to go and play and watch and then communicate about it. So I don't know if I would start there. I might start in guided access, and then as they get older, do something like that. I mean, I think that's definitely a individual by case decision. I just have a comment on this. So we 
we bought a reading for our dedicated device. We had an iPad that was for play. And then we were left with a situation where we had a communication device because the trial ended. And I had to make a decision to make a play iPad into a communication iPad. That was a three month process of fights and tears and anger and frustration because now play iPad is just communication. So that's the only potential issue is that if you want to go down the path of eventually being a dedicated device, you might just have some time of frustration. Or you just keep it as a boat. Yeah. But yeah, I guess. She was definitely navigating away a lot in the beginning. And then like that access, she would just yeah, throw yeah. it on the ground because she couldn't navigate away. So, yeah. I just have something real quick. I think I just spoke that dedicated device it's really, I think, it's changed a lot over the last 20 years, but with the iPads, if you go through your insurance or medical facility, you're gonna get a dedicated device, even if it's an iPad, mm -hmm. um, because it's gonna come in a special case with a great speaker on it. I think that's the gist of it. A non-dedicated device is just getting the iPad off the shelf, and that's kind of what you families would be purchasing. We got the special case in the iPad from school, but then we, we unlocked it. Uh, hi, I'm Megan. Uh, I, I don't. I'm a sibling, um, and uh, my older brother has uh, SAS. And uh, in both terms of the, uh, both definitions yeah. of SAS. Uh, <laughs> um, and um, okay, so I work for Illinois. I work. At for this is mostly just for Americans in here, uh, but I work for Illinois Division of Developmental Disabilities. And going back to like, uh, especially once they turn 18, you know, you're gonna need a new device. It's not gonna last you 30 years, right? No matter what uh, device you have. Um, I would look into your state. Um, there's lots of waiver services that will cover things like this so that when they do turn 18 and maybe they're you're figuring out health insurance for them when they're adults. Um, reach out to your state and see if there is that you can you can receive money to dedicate it to this. So it's not just self-funded. Because you're, if you're going to be doing this once every five, eight, ten years, it'll be, it'll be nice to not have to drop that kind of money every single time. And yeah, that's all I want to add. Thank you. That reminded me too that most states, I believe, have some sort of AT, some sort of conglomerate, something. Um, like in Michigan, we have a couple of different ways that anybody in the state could access any of these devices or the hardware or the software um, to trial. Uh, it doesn't have to be through school. I know one of them doesn't have to be. Uh, so that should be available within your state too somewhere. Are public school required? Schools required by yes. um, okay. So here here it goes. Are public <laughs> schools required? Um, the short answer I think is yes. So I have a slide on that. So the US Department of Education um, just at the beginning of this year came out with this um, myths and facts surrounding AT devices and services document. Anybody can access it. Um, there's 28 myths. I pulled out a few of them for you here. Um, and the, the gist of it is um, if the data suggests that that's what your student needs in order to access their curriculum, which is communication, is you have to be able to communicate to access your curriculum, then they are responsible. Um, and that's the law. Um, so you, you do have that behind you. Um, that being said, I've worked for lots of different districts, and sometimes they look for loopholes, um, but it's really having the knowledge of others on your team, and that might be you, um, but you have a great tribe here that you can rely on too. Um, so the short answer to that, I think, is yes. Yeah. To, to follow up and kind of help families in that boat in the room, um, Got it, you can use law to get um, this school to provide one essentially. Do schools have the flexibility to then say, 
yes, the school's going to provide one, but it's going to be school-owned, so it's going to stay exclusively at the school. Yes. So yes. That's, that's so, what happened with us. Okay. We had one already. We went private speech on our own. And then when we brought up in the IEP meeting, it was, we have one. It's not as good as yours. Yeah. You can only be utilized when she's in school. And then that might just create also a disconnect because now you're trying to have them learn a device and then split it between two devices, which was then even more complex and complicated. And Said, okay, well, then we want her to put an IEP report. Then each therapist, each teacher has to then work with her own um, AAC device that we bring in for continuity with everything that she was doing. That so that, that may be a situation where it may be more helpful to go that route or go the medical route to get one. Let's not do it, but it's just really like school litigation, which yeah. is like painful in every situation. First, <clears throat> Our school made us sign a waiver. So we got to bring it wherever we wanted, but because we signed the waiver, then obviously it's a great kid that is sure. Yeah. Our school is great, but there are not always great schools out there. Not mm -hmm. really we, just, we just had to put it in our IEP that he is required to have it on him at all times. Yeah. And it's not like for fun. It's that's his communication device. He has an iPad and it will be with him no matter what. Whether it's in the case or out of the case, when it, even if it looks just like his iPad, it's with him. And you should force it into your IEP. Yes. Because if you don't, then it's like, well, why am I, why is my little daughter clunking around in her book bag? This iPad, it needs to be forced in there so that it's yep. every therapy, every, every therapist that she has, you know, you want modeling done in class, you want modeling done. Because if not, what we found was, well, how would you do it with it? Uh, well, it's, you don't know. And if you have really phenomenal schools, um, <laughs> they'll actually use that IEP as justification to the county to why they need an AT rep at the school um, if it's written IEP. So not only that's could you potentially help those kids, it could help future kids too if, if you've got a really good school. So that's the next step we're at. It's like how do we pay it forward? Yeah. And make sure that the school systems that give us more for a better job. Yeah, and, and the we systems also that give Thank you. We also added into our IEP. Talking about the spelling earlier. Last year, we wrote into our IEP that he could have been taught spelling and reading, but instead of working on there's something else we're working on. Um, and I was like, we're going to be working on spelling on the device and within his program, and we're going to be working on reading the words, particularly the one, the sight word on his icons, that we would be focusing on that as part of his IEP to help with communication as well as his education goals. And the, the slide deck for session two, there are slides related to the AEC and the IEP. Um, so those of you who are on Zoom joining us, the conversation in the room has been around how to reflect usage or access to a communication device within the IEP and implementation of that and those supports. Um, so in the second slide deck, I'm not sure if that can just be a resource for you all, um, that there are some statements that I put in there or just some like guiding questions of where and what sections those can be reflected in. Anything else about the AEC and the IEP that you guys wanted to, to talk about? We can move on to software. We're move on to software? Yeah. Okay, so um, this is not an exhaustive list by any means. Um, some companies have, um, in my opinion, um, unfortunately gone to a subscription-based um, apps uh, for, for some of their robust communication apps. Um, these are one-time fee apps currently, and hopefully they stay that way. Um, so these are robust, I've used that word a couple times, so they're going to have thousands and thousands of vocabulary words, There's, they're going to have a motor planning component to them. Um, these two have more phrases stored in them than like, words for life, but they're all editable, so you can add phrases um, for that, those quick fires, so to speak. Um, 
What else did I want to say about that? What's the difference between them? The, the difference the between them? So the, the main difference, Land Boards for Life is the only one up here where you're always going to have an 84 grid. So there's 84 buttons on that home screen and um, you can mask or you can hide some of them, but you can't change the grid size, okay? It's always this, it's always 84 and it's always these images, yes. Um, so that's that's a big hallmark of Land Words for Life. Now having said that, I really like their language system, and it's called Unity, and that you can only get on a dedicated device like the Accent that was talked about, um, because you can change the grid size, and that can be something that can grow with them too. Um, so that's just like one of the reasons why you would maybe want to get a dedicated device like that banner, which all goes back to the feature matching, guys, right? Like, what does your child actually need? Um, touch chat um, with word power. I really like this one for some of my autistic kids who are gestalt language processors, so they learn language more in chunks and units versus individual words. Um, they're like your intonation babies. That's what the, the research is saying. Um, and so I really like touch chat for some of those phrases because that's how these kids start communicating is in phrases instead of single words. And it's just the platform for this is a little bit easier for me. Um, Prolo Coder though has a lot of the same features as these. Um, a lot of categories down here. The thing with some of these other ones is why I am just a little bit biased toward Land Force for Life. I'm not a user, so what, what, who am I to say? I'm just a therapist, but I can say whatever I want, get to whatever I want in three hits or less on Lamp Words for Life, whereas Pro Loco, sometimes it takes me six. So I'm clicking six times until I get to what I want to say, and that's just not as efficient. Um, so there are, there are benefits and drawbacks to each one up here and it's kind of like again maybe trialing or talking to someone who's really knowledgeable and like figuring out there might not be a wrong start either like the three of these I had for my child I would be very happy with so luckily we're in a room with the, the folks you can ask this question to so I have asked several speech therapists for private or public um, other speech therapists of Eliana with SATB2, which of these three is the most optimal? Because yes, maybe touch chat like works for autistic children, but children like ours who have their own nuances that we're all familiar with. This is the magic of all of us sitting in this room. It's like, well, what has this team experienced in regards to out of these three, which is the best for SATB2? Because I know sometimes our kids can easily get blended with like autism children, but it's like, let's take advantage of like all of us sitting in this room, because I have asked very smart people, and so I was like, well, it depends. I'm like, you like an answer, right? Because for us, it's it's the range of, well, touch chat, and my husband and I do this all the time. It's, I think, more words may be the better, because it's you're opening up more vocabulary. He thinks maybe more refinement, so that you can lock in on specific words, which is only four on top of it. So, I don't know, I would love to open this up for the, the room to see, like, our SATB2 babies, like, what has been folks' experience with with any of these programs from a software perspective? Would it be weird to raise our hands? <laughs> do we, but do we want to do the mic search? Because I'm, I'm kind of put folks on the Zoom. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so the input that I have is um, we've been lab users for the entire year, whether it was on VRC device, the action device, or iPad. So the Proloquo 2, um, I've done like a trial, I've played around with it just to see the difference. Honestly, I think the grid system for LAN is a game changer, and the biggest reason why is because you can set more or less a physical grouping of things that are commonly used together. 
So I know for Cadence, she's all about her people, toys, her animals, and, and there's groupings, right? So whenever we go into a screen such as uh, toys, she loves Care Bears, so all the Care Bears go together, right? And then we can cordon off other toys into little groupings. And I think it helps her learn a little bit easier where those things are. You know, we'll put, like for family members, we'll have mom, dad, and their kids in a little group together, and then we can you know, put them in. Versus some of the other ones, if I'm not mistaken, they all scale to the total number of options that is in that new menu. Mm. And so that was a big difference. So big fan of LAM. It's also cheap. And then you can share the vocabulary from iPad to iPad through AirDrop. So if you want to have multiple devices or something like that, So we were using LAMP for two years, um, and Joe got dropped in with speech therapy. Joe will be 10 in September, and the speech therapist trialed him three times in hour-long visits and said, eh, I guess we'll use LAMP. So I didn't have a lot of confidence walking in, but for him, it was the motor planning that we focused on. Two years in, we have 10 words. We decided to switch, um, and we're working on Pro Quo, not Pro Quo to go, it's the newer version. It has a parent coaching app that goes with it that we feel is going to be very important for us in particular. But for, we enjoyed the grid, but for us, it wasn't as customizable as we needed it to be. Um, Joe is a little bit farther on the spectrum uh, for SAP 2 than other children are. He has a lot more behavior issues and a lot harder ability to communicate. He also identifies with autism and OCD and anxiety. So we have a lot of other things in the play for us. So for us, Proloquo is gonna be the one that we trialed it 15 times in the last month, and we're now getting sentences. Very simple sentences, I want ball. And with LAMP, we were really lucky if we got ball. Um, so for us in particular, the motor planning aspect just did not work. Well, he needed more pathways to get to what it is that he wants. And um, some of these are just not intuitive at all. Um, I mean, I, I would not have a. It took me forever until it was right up there. That want was actually a wanted poster. It, it did not click. It is a wanted poster, and it, it did not click until it was right up there. I was like, I should know. So for the motor planning, you might be able to speak more for this than I am, but what they were talking about is it's the motor planning. Because there's one pathway to get to a word, the three clicks, there's one pathway. Um, whereas my understanding is that Proloquo, it's kind of like Microsoft, there's more than one way to skin a cat here. So it was particularly like for Apple, which is the example they gave us. For Joe, it needs to be eat, fruit, apple. And that's how he gets there, because he can motor plan eat, fruit, apple. And two years ago, he wasn't navigating a whole lot in Netflix and YouTube, and now, gosh, he knows what he can find. Um, and then Proloquo, he can get there through red, food, eat, fruit. There's so many different pathways to get to where it is that he wants to go, that it's not as concrete. I was just going to say that's kind of prime example as to why it really is child dependent because she tried lamp. I mean, there's how many of our lamp users in here? Uh, how about Proloquo or To Go? Either Touch Chat, TV Snap, TV Snap, TV snap Motor Planning. Anybody? That's the motor plan. Your motor plan. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So there's even a variety of, re of representation here in this room. So it, I feel like it does really depend. But I don't know how that works itself out in real life of how you figure that out. Um, I do think that you can start from anywhere and anything is helpful. Um, with the lamp, one consideration is it's now available on your cell phone. I don't know which other apps are. Even with the 84 grid and Lydia is getting to that 11, almost 12, where she's like, um, my sister has a cell phone, my friends have a cell phone, I don't want to use that big clunky thing, we're getting to that point. So to have it available on an iPad, or on a, on a phone is really cool for future 
um, development for her where she can feel like she just fits in as a standing out like a sore thumb. Um, and with the motor planning, just having that one pathway, it's kind of like, I, I like this illustration, if you have your cell phone and an app gets deleted or moved on your cell phone and you're like, I cannot, I don't know where that is. It's like, that's what it is for a LAMP user. That button's gonna be in the same place every time. So she'll go to like, and she'll already move without seeing the next page to the where that new button is that she wants or the next button is that she wants. So it, the concrete is really helpful for some and it's also distracting for others. They like, it's just a lot of thoughts going. So yeah, it's not really a one good app or answer, I think. And not to, do I have to wait for that? <laughs> 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 I think you want to run the phone. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of the AAC stories. Um, one of the things too, not to add another layer of it depends to flush out hopefully in a trial stage or when you're working through whether the school home device, what have you, is um, for all the other reasons, obviously we're a lamp family, but um, one of the things grid size um, is actually something that I would encourage families to actually play with. Um, that was something that was in her cadence a great deal that I didn't know, was I had hit a bunch of things thinking it would be sensory overload for her. Uh, it was not, and, uh, it was actually hindering her communication. And when I, when the accent broke one time and she had everything in front of her and we couldn't hide anything, it's really when kind of her communication kind of skyrocketed some for being able to independently just play and have dedicated time to just click and hear what the words were saying to her. Um, and she kind of memorized those pathways. So certain software is going to have the option, you know, the grid size, the buttons change. That doesn't work well for cadence and they work really well for other kids. So not only as you guys are playing through software, but play around with if maybe grid size changes are good for you and maybe they're really not. Um, so just thinking through that as you guys are trying to through things too. Wow, this was amazing. I hope that each of you this met some sort of, checked some sort of box in your head and um, satisfied something that, that you were hopefully looking for, answered a question. Um, it's okay if you don't have all the answers right now. Remember, you have a team and a tribe here with this amazing group um, this week and, and beyond. Um, but don't forget this for each of your children, uh, that they are going to do amazing things. Uh, and yes. Can I just ask a question for the people out here with us? So this isn't about like software or hardware, but how we have two other typical development children who find Wyatt's device very fun and funny. How do you encourage, like, cause so it's hard to teach him like, let's do this when his one year old or two year old sister is saying cow, moo, moo, moo all the time cause it's fun. How do you make it to where like, that's not a fun thing or it's funny, you know? I guess I don't know how to, how to really ask that, but like, More simple. More yeah, like it, right yeah. now it's just a, they find it fun and funny and why it laughs with them when it's moving, but then he's not learning how to actually use it correctly. Cause we're still in the very early learning stage. He just turned four. So how do we make it to where it's not like, Ooh, let's all play with it together. I love that for him right now though. Yes, he's, me too. It's learning that I can use this to connect with others. Yes. And that other, it will come. Yes, and that's true, but I just find like, you know, sister yes. wants to just hit yes. play when I want him to talk to me. I think I was going to say something similar in that like, maybe keep encouraging that curiosity with her. Sure. And yeah, she's two, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to be able to explain that right. this, but also remembering that communicating is a fun thing to do and you do communicate like making somebody laugh is a way of communicating and I, I don't want um, making it like so serious it makes it feel like that's like this is work and this is like this is so serious and this is important when like they're two and four and they just want to hear the cow move from the yeah. machine. Um, See, this is why I'm at. Why I asked. I know. It's really good. Get other people's know. perspective on it. Yeah. I just, I worked at a <laughs> sure. school for like seven, eight years. And so um, I only have job experience. Sorry, everybody. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm not a parent. Um, but um, yeah, I think like it's hard to like be like, you have to like learn all of this. But if they are connecting and having fun, even if it's just one button right now, they're going to get bored of the cow soon enough. Sure. You know, and then they'll move on to other things. And, and 
then your son, the four-year-old, will be able to start saying things to her, you know. When yeah, maybe, true. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. That's yeah. Real quick, good. I'm sorry. A Nick, announcement for if you have children in child care, please exit. To the <laughs> 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 yes, and I know we're like way over time, so thank you guys. There's a bunch of resources up here for you. Um, yes, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, it's important, but we definitely said problems. It's why it's important, and then giving it to the session.